Now, the fans, I think, want to know about mods in an online environment. You know, sure. It's a huge part of you know, your games over the years, VGS. How are you going to treat the idea of mods or user content in this environment? Um, we love mods. Yeah. And so we are 100% committed to doing that in 76 as well. Okay. We will not be able to do that at launch, though. Yep. You know, our goal for launch, this is really new for us, is have a well-running, robust service. And then some period later, we're currently still designing what that service looks like. You'll be able to have your own private world and be able to mod it and do all of that. We think with our games, that's where like the long-term life of them really is. Yeah. Um, that is trickier when you get into an online world, but we're definitely committed to that. It just won't be at launch. That quote is now 666 days old, if you're watching this video when it came out. And talk about great timing in regards to that. Despite even the day after its full-on announcement, Todd Howard reaffirming that Fault 76 would definitely get mod support, we haven't heard much. In the years that followed, the topic of mods and Fallout 76 would pop up from time to time. We get a little, yeah, no, we're still planning to do something every once in a while. But even still, the last time we actually saw Bethesda reference mods in relation to Fallout 76 was seemingly Fallout first. We got this gem with the release of private servers, but otherwise it seems like the last time they really talked about it in detail was all the way to 2019's E3, almost a full year ago. So now, a year and a half after release, mods are seemingly not any closer to releasing than they ever were before. We of course got private servers, but the functionality, the framework for mods to be included with this game doesn't really seem to be something in the works, or at least there's been no indication thus far. Now, of course, there might be a tremendous surprise right around the corner, and I would be very happy to eat my words on this video. I love mods. But why exactly would this be something Bethesda doesn't focus on, especially with all the other issues Fault 76 has? Has had. Mods for many of the past fallouts really acted as a crutch during pain points, helping fix fundamental issues, whether that be bugginess or even just core gameplay issues. I think one of the big reasons, and I posited this in a video in the past, was actually that mods would almost offer too much competition to one of Fallout 76's major revenue streams, that with the Atomic Shop. If your choices were downloading this for free or buying this for $15, not really that hard of a choice to make, at least in my eyes. And surely Bethesda is aware of that, that even if mods were reserved to private servers, it would likely have a hit on the Atomic Shop revenue because there would probably be an influx of awesome free mods that do very similar things or sometimes even better things. But of course, there is the other way of looking at it where they are still generating additional revenue because you'll have to buy access to private servers to use some of those mods. And that additional revenue from the Fallout first or private server cost could offset what they're not making from the Atomic Shop because you're using mods. And although that is possible, I think one, you're going to have a negative PR situation with mods artificially being behind a paywall, and that may actually end up you making less money overall. But I think one of the big reasons we haven't seen mods for Fallout 76 thus far is there's really just been such a focus on Wastelanders. They've been working on this DLC for roughly a year at this point, which is quite astounding. And to me, it really does seem like one of those situations where Bethesda is really banking on this being almost a relaunch for the game, provide a significant influx of new players, and then hopefully with subsequent updates over the next couple of months, you can keep those players playing the game and buying things in the Atomic Shop. Although, I bet if Wastelanders ends up underperforming, doesn't hit those goals that they were hoping for, they always have mods to kind of be in the back of their pocket. A feature they'll always have that they can add that is basically guaranteed to just bring a decent chunk of players who will actively play your game from there on out, interested in what kind of new mod content does get delivered. But of course, all that's just speculation. I still think the fact that we've really heard little to nothing as far as progress and mod support for this game over a year and a half time span is definitely indicative of their intentions. There also is still a fairly active modding scene around Fallout 76. And despite this channel almost being a core focus on modding Bethesda games and Fallout specifically, I've only talked about it like once or twice. So for the second half of this video, I want to actually look at what kind of things are happening in that modding scene. One of the first ones, which I actually have discussed quite a bit, is modders fixing some of the fundamental flaws or missing features of this game. And in fact, this is one front where I think Bethesda has done a pretty good job. In some of those past E3 29 interviews, Bethesda discussed how they were paying attention to some of the top downloaded mods, which you would find a bunch of cheating mods. 
But if you look past those, among the top choices are several very handy functionality focused mods, and Bethesda has actually done a pretty good job at incorporating several of those as features, whether it be something as simple as the known plans mod, or even other things like more prominent on-screen event notifiers. Now it seems like that was more of a push in the past, it hasn't really happened much as of late, but they definitely did have a push there. If you're somebody who actively plays this game on PC and hasn't really paid attention to the modding scene though, you may be pleasantly surprised. For starters, one of the major new additions is Cloudy Zero One's Fallout 76 Mod Manager. Technically this came out in January of 2019, but received several updates and is now just the definitive mod manager for this game. It actually makes installing mods easy, just normally a one-click process, but also does things like allow you to enter into a nuclear winter appropriate mode. For most mods, you can actually use them with nuclear winter, so this allows you to quickly disable that while keeping your mods installed. Not as feature-rich as something like Mod Organizer 2, but definitely making the whole process a lot less headache-inducing. There are other things like improved health bars, which has really become a staple among several people, actually only coming out in July of 2019, which is fairly late relative to the rest on this list. This will make it so you can very clearly see how much health you currently have, which is vital for several of the builds that do require you to reach a certain health point, whether that be full health or high health or particularly low health, as is so common with the bloody build meta. And this is definitely one Bethesda should pay attention to and just add to the game as an optional feature. Similar to that, we do have Intra Reborn, which gives you more explicit descriptions of how much items at your camp cost. If you're somebody who is a avid camp builder, you probably hate this bar because it so quickly gets full but also it's so nondescript. This will make things quite a bit more clear and actually give you some numbers to go along with some of the changes you make. Although one for me that is really one of the most handy mods out there and is definitely something Bethesda should add is the perk loadout manager. In Fallout 76 there's a lot of perks that are just useful rarely. All the lockpicking and hacking perks or just sometimes as you're crafting or building, you want different perks equipped to get certain bonuses. With this mod, literally with just the click of one key in this menu, you can totally switch which perk cards you do have enabled. What otherwise becomes a very annoying and just frustrating process to go back and forth with. For me, I do have that lockpicking build, but also things like a carry weight build. So if I find myself over encumbered, I could take off all those damage perks and just focus on getting myself back to camp. This is another one that's been hugely requested for Bethesda, and frankly, this mod does just about everything you could hope for. Better inventory is another staple that has remained around and gotten fairly consistent updates. Not so much as of late, but frankly Fault 76 hasn't even been getting updates as of late. This allows you to much more clearly see the weights of various items in your inventory, and even break it down by category. And with inventory management being such a larger focus of this game, it really is a massive influence. But then of course there's even more minor things like the better default power armor light, a personal favorite of my own, just making it so the light is brighter, easier to use, easier to see at night, or another huge quality of life improvement, the power armor fast exit and enter. A little cheaty, but it'll make it so you always use the fast exit or enter animations instead of the more lengthy typical ones. Those are some of the most handy mods out there, but it's definitely not the biggest mod category. This still without a doubt is Fallout modding. So one of the categories that does have a particularly strong presence are some of those lewd or just interesting mods. Now of course with stuff like this, even though it does bring visual changes to the wasteland, it'll only apply to you. So if you see some dude looking at your character a little bit too closely, you might have one of these installed and you look totally different to him. And although I'm not super surprised that these exist, I am even still somehow somewhat surprised at how popular they are, even with Fallout 76. But the category that has easily become the most popular is one of the few ones that still does see fairly regular additions are with retexture or visual mods for Fallout 76, bringing improved or just modified textures for various outfits in the game. A significant portion of these actually do affect power armor, typically being power armor paint job replacer, so you can get different looks. Now, of course, it is worth reminding you this will only affect you if you have it installed, so other people won't see this also, it's just for you, but it actually is fairly significant, and I think a pretty positive change. You can find some that will change the map to be more like Fallout 4s, which I think most people won't like, but it's actually a nice switch up. I found it to be pretty pleasant to use, or even the wide variety affecting some of the more rare or obscure 
items, and even some of the brand new release skins. This is one of my favorite categories as it takes what Bethesda did, something cool and unique, and kind of just turns it up to 11, making it all the better and more interesting. A bit more higher quality and kind of getting more bang for your buck. Although one category I'm surprised doesn't get more attention is actually some of the reshades available for Fallout 76. Functionally, these are large in part lighting overhauls for the game, but several are actually pretty good. Here I'm using Appalachia Revamped, which I think just makes Fallout 76 look better. It definitely has its high points and its low points depending on the available lighting, but it's one of those ones that I would use and I'd find myself just looking longer. I would do a double take and be like, oh yeah, this actually looks pretty nice and it stays pretty true to what Fallout 76 looked like originally, just some change ups here and there. There are a wide variety of options in this category though, to absolutely extreme to fairly tame. Overall with Fallout 76 modding, I think it's an interesting category because it has so much potential, but it also has such a kind of double edged sword for Bethesda. This could really be something next level, actually getting to experience mods, custom content with your friends. And depending on what kind of mod support you get, you could have totally revolutionary things for the Fallout or Bethesda modding scene like Trouble in Terrorist Town but Fallout 76 edition or a TDM mode. There's a lot of cool stuff you could do outside of just porting weapon or armor mods if that is even possible. And it's really something I hope we get sooner rather than later, but again, based off everything we've seen thus far, even though the current releases and what we have right now is definitely pretty awesome, a lot more than I would have expected, official support could really open things up to a whole new window window of possibilities. And I think for a lot of people it could be what finally gets them to play this game if it ever ends up happening. Until then though, that's more of a brief update on Fallout 76 modding. Some explanations as to why we likely haven't heard anything and what's been happening with the scene over the past year and a half. Hopefully you guys found this video informative, hopefully you found it interesting. Just 7 days from today, Wastelanders will release. Tomorrow I should have a big video going over just about everything we know thus far. So if you want to keep up to date or just maybe you forgot about certain details, you can look forward to that. But otherwise, as always, again, I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later.